Martin, uh, we're out in your beautiful dairy farm, right in Wales. We're out, we've been out visiting you at Martin Evans Group Limited. Where did it start? Well, I suppose it started, I was one of four children at home. It wasn't, the business wasn't big enough or strong enough to uh, all of us go home. So I rented a local piggery, no running water, selling 11 pigs a week to a local butcher and that progressed, made enough of money that year to finance a mower, borrowed my dad's tractor. It was a JF 2.4 uh, no, fair machine, but it did well, it did well to be fair. Uh, so it started with that and then um, the following year bought a forage harvester and a, a second hand uh, Sammy Buffalo, 130 horsepower. Now I did think I was the boy then, but uh, it did more whistling than anything else. But. <laughs> So it sort of progressed from there and then two or three years later took a tenancy of a, a council holding that was 36 acres, just beef and sheep. Still milked a little bit at home. The contractor was developing and we were building on that and we started doing agricultural buildings. We had the uh, council holding in, uh, when was that, 89? And then we took the tenancy of this place on in 93, which is 188 acres. Sold all the beef cattle, had to buy all dairy cows. Then I had to buy the tenant share of the milk quota. Interest rates were, well, they are, I suppose, it's getting close to where they are now, but you know, it was 10% then. And yeah, it was just uh, a bit of hard graft and, uh, and uh, taking a few chances. So you know, we bought, I think we had a quarter of 450,000 litres at the time. So we bought the cows then, uh, managed to fill a quarter that year, and then we get involved in a leasing quarter, buying quarter. But it was just to, grow the business really and grow the herd so yeah so the milking was uh, done by myself bar sunday afternoon uh, so i'd milk in the morning uh, we'd go out building in the day concrete in come home about five o'clock uh, you'd have tea with the kids they'd go to bed i'd go back out and milk but you know you had a sunday afternoon off yeah, it worked it was um you're young then you're stupid you borrowed the money and you think and um there was a lot of doubters that uh, felt that uh, we wouldn't be doing it for long, so we actually didn't need an alarm clock. You'd soon get up in the morning because it, it wasn't to prove the doubters, but you know, you, we we felt a gut feeling was we felt it was the right thing to do, and so the business has grown since then. So uh, the contracting is where we started, so that's clearly grown. The building side of the business has grown, where we've gone from. We, well, we still do a lot of agricultural buildings, do a lot of house renovations, that type of thing. So we've got two types on the building gangs, uh, in-house if you, as such, and the others are on the, the farm buildings, groundworks. So that has grown. Yeah, now we've, we've sort of, the dairy's pushed up to thick end of 14, 1,500 cows. We are going more. We rear all our young, own young stock. Well, all, all our heifers we genomically test. I've got three sons, two that are in the business, and the other one is a footballer. So the one runs a dairy, the other one uh, runs a contracting, and the other one is, is moved off farm. Yeah, we've got a little girl now, so hopefully uh, that should fulfil everything we want to do. But yeah, so the business has grown from, you know, we're farming to what we were now, we're just over 3,000 acres, grow all, all our own forage for, especially the maize, the grass, quite a bit of wheat. So it's just purely for our own type of thing where, and that's James's side of the business. He's developed that. There's a lot more measuring tools and KPIs and benchmarking and groups that we're in and different things. So uh, that's useful. And as you're getting more numbers and doing more things, we, we need some of the information because you, know, you do take some, some big hits, big risks. But as long as they're calculated and the job goes all right and the wheel doesn't come off, we'll be all right. So we did diverse into poultry to five years ago. We built that ourselves, saved uh, quite a bit of money on that. Yeah, so we've diverse, so we're still dairy. Uh, the size of the dairy herd is growing, the land base is growing, the poultry is growing. Holiday lets, we've diversed into that. We're not predominantly agricultural buildings anymore. So basically that's uh, where we are really. <laughs> a real variety of stuff like. It is a variety. You won't get bored. No, definitely not. <laughs> so you're you're taking mostly to do with the building at the minute, are you? Yes, it's it's 
it's evolving. And, and uh, to be fair, uh, you know, I was trying to run the farm in the building, the contracting, albeit yeah. in a in a smaller way, and before the lads came home, and and I, it was quite a, a culture shock because I'd be saying to Josh, "Where are you going tomorrow? We're going to so and so, so and so." I said, "He hasn't rung me," and they always used to ring me. <laughs> I'll be honest. When I first started, there's um, there's one guy who works for the electric board. Uh, he's been with me from the beginning. Uh, he's absolutely brilliant. You met him, Brownie. He manages. And to be perfectly honest, we have uh, now, because the business has grown, we have a bit more structure where we have our old accountant chairs a monthly meeting just to discuss. It's a strategy that we have. And because we're so, there's so many other things going on, you know, we all need to know. So we have a monthly meeting. He chairs that. And my mechanic is in that. He knows exactly what we're doing, everything in the business. Uh, I may sit on a deal on a forager, um, may not, but uh, everything else, Brownie and Josh do. I, I, you leave it to my Yes, I know what's going on, mm-hmm. probably after it's arrived, but I know what's going on. <laughs> but it's, um, but you can't do everything. And, and, and because it has grown to where it is now, you can't be in control of everything. And it's quite lucky that they want to do that, so it does work well. James is on the stock. Yeah, James is on the stock. So he he's running the dairy herd. You know, or he's a big part of a big player. Everything is discussed from if, if we're doing a contract for feed or or anything like that. They're, they're always discussed. We have the debates on one thing or another. But yeah, he's 32 now. They've got to make some, um, which they do do, to be fair. They do do. Yeah, so he's he's running the cows with a good team, mind. Yeah. With a very good team from... Well, it is just a good team from uh, the, the calf girl to the feeding man to the, the AI and the foot trimming to... The, it's a whole thing. We're a team rather than ranks. We don't like ranks or management or middle tier or nothing like that. We'd rather be all part of the team. Sometimes I'd like to be on their wages, but that doesn't quite work like that. But we want to be part of a team, really, because uh, there's no pecking order. And then Josh, he's kind of pushing on with the contracting now. Yeah, he's pushing on the contracting, you know, and he, trading as well, you know, in, in from forage to straw to machines and different things. So, yeah, it's part of a, yeah, and he's responsible then for, you know, the lads and the, you know, it, so it does, it works all right, yeah. Yeah, so there's really no way you could sort of do it all like you do. Well, you can't do it on your own. No. I don't care who you are. No. Uh, and none of us can. You know, James can't do all the dairy, Josh can do all the contracting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we have got some key players in the business. Mm-hmm. You've got a real nice young stock unit up there. How long has it been going for? <clears throat> We've had young... Because numbers are growing, clearly. Yeah. And, then, and then because they were on some land or buildings that we'd bought. I wouldn't say we were dated, but they'd only house X amount. And we were just travelling so many miles on the road with the yard scraper and then you go back to the straw chopper then for the feeder wagon and actually that was just a full-time job we decided to invest in uh, a young stock unit predominantly just solely for young stock that is easy you know the the flow for the animals is good you know so we can take them there at six months old we can bring them home six weeks before eight weeks before the calf and it does work really well and you know we, we put in hand in race, foot bathing, you know, something regular. We have protocols in place in the dairy from uh, routine work, you know, for routine PDs once a week to a dry off on a Friday and everything. We have a routine for everything. So and it, everyone knows what's going on and it does work well. But yeah, the Youngstock unit, that was good investment. And I know it's a lot of money, but it, it's right. Do you want to take me through what happens from when cow calves to... Where do they go? And... Well, we're on a mating programme. So there's traits that James decides with, well, with genus, to be fair. So we we have traits that we decide. And also we genomically test in the young stock. So we know it's just, just fast forward. We're, you know, we're a pedigree herd. We're fully housed, milk three times a day on two units. We've got a lot of KPIs and measuring tools and a lot of good management tools from you know, Uniform Agri, you know, the, the, the computer system that we're using to uh, the, the fertility collars to even down to the Keenan with what's measured on, you know, it, it, you're downloading off the loads and one thing and another. So they're all collated and put together. So we know exactly and again, when we have the monthly management meeting, you know, they're brought up. Where are we? What are we doing? How is that going? Where's our aim? And you know, and for a home, we're on the multi cut, five, six cuts a year. And the farm actually does have to pay the contract in because they're, they're different companies. We're all under a group, but it's a different company. And we've gone from feeding what 40, 
44 to 46 percent forage to 56 because of better quality grass you're aiming for that 12 me proteins at 15 16. Uh, the maize we you know, we used to cut that uh, because the cow numbers are grown and, uh, and everything else we used to cut that sort of 12 14 inches high you know to raise the starch level and the dry matter into the into the maize and that actually worked quite well cow numbers are grown and everything else and we need the volume so um we are cutting a bit lower not as low as we used to so i still probably have the cleanest truck in wales underneath because every time you go over the maize double it just cleans just like a wire brush but yeah, no, uh, we do tend to do, but we're big on rotating crops. You know, we've done a few years maize on maize on maize and, and it just gets less and less and less. So after rotating, we found that quite useful, but that's only happened because we've been able to get a bit more land. So it's given us a bit more freedom on that. But yeah, so going back to the dairy, so uh, we're using sort of 30, 40% of beef on the lower end. So we're just trying to improve on, on everything at a faster pace by genomically testing rather than a natural way. Seen a few nice bells and blues through the calves, yeah. Well, we got on to beef now yeah. because the, cow, the numbers are coming through. So we're, we will be going to Angus now, to be fair, just for ease of calving and the milk contract we're on. So we will be going to Angus and I think that'll be better all round. How long do you keep your beef stock then? Uh, we don't. don't uh, they, no, they're only kept for uh, four weeks. Okay. Yeah, yeah four weeks maximum. Yeah, we yeah we just want to concentrate on the heifers, keeping them alive, uh, looking after them. Um, yeah, you know, and there is pressure on. You know, there is pressure on the calving chef. Yeah, you know, we. I think we all, as we expand, you'll go and put all to the milking parlour. Then you put another cubicle shed up, and then, then you need another silage pit, and then you need another one of this, another one of that, and the calf shed always seems to be the last that's. And that's why we did the young stock unit, and we're, we're actually putting a shed up now for 230 calves, just to do a better job of that. Everything is really tightly monitored then, KPI-wise. Yeah, we do, because yeah. we're in a benchmarking group yeah. in the dairy, and it's not a competition, but it was more to do with, I know when we first started, you thought, why are they making more money than us, or why are they doing this? And, or you were having a look, how much are they making, or how much are they not making? Mm -hmm. To be perfectly honest, it's the best thing that's ever happened. I'm not in, we're not interested in what, you know, we have this nature of being nosy, don't get yes. me wrong. But if they've got a, a, a vet cost of 0.87 or 0.68 or whatever, we want to know why, what are we doing wrong? Now, if we're using, if we've got different protocols from uh, IBR, Lepto and BVD and things like that, absolutely fine, we can live with that. But we want to know if we're actually, what are we doing wrong or what are we getting carried away with? So the benchmark is quite a good, useful tool. But, you know, and then James is in a group, uh, in the, um, the milk tank, the, the, and the next generation, things like that, where they, they do quite a lot of that. And again, it, it's useful and they're like-minded people. And it, it's to make sure you're efficient, that's to be fair. You know, so yes, we've got quite a lot of uh, monitoring tools from what we're feeding to what we're selling what we're buying uh yeah it does work well and and clearly you know it's all part of the cog isn't it so you know we need the the heat time collars we need you know we need we need to capture that data as well it's all right having all these gizmos yeah. but you've got to be able to capture and use it you just think it's all worth it to be monitoring everything that pays off in the end cutting in those extra hours and yeah I do believe it is. So if you see in your benchmarking group that there's something, someone, someone else is a lot cheaper getting something else and then you can look into it. Exactly. It, it, it's also, it challenges you yeah. because if you're not careful, you can have your head down. You know, we start here at up as four in the morning and you finish it up as one at night. Personally, not me or any one person. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it's a routine and a mundane. And if you're not careful, you can get sort of stuck in a rut if you're not... Do you know what I mean? And you think, well, it's okay, we're doing all right. Yeah. But you're not challenging it. You know, you've got to be able to challenge yourself. And it's, you know, and you'll speak to Josh tomorrow. And, and you know, one forager he's got, it uses a bit less fuel. It's narrower on the road. Are we not better off to be buying them? Or, uh, you know, because you've always had one make, mm -hmm. is it always the right thing? And, and likewise with the tractors, you know, the fuel savings, the price of fuel now and just different things. And they do make a difference. Every penny card. It does, mm -hmm. it does. So, you know, it is about, you've got to be comfortable with yourself, but it, we need that sort of, I think you need that sort of information. And because before I was a one-man band, admittedly it was all in your mind mm -hmm. or in your head, 
but you knew everything was going on. Now it's just gone more diverse and grown um, to where it was. Uh, if you're not care careful, you're not in control. Now, I'll never be in control, and neither will the others, but between the three of us, we've got a fighting chance. Yeah. Well, you'll never be in control, but don't get me wrong, but at least you know what's going on. And that's why we try to have meetings, because it's only just to find out what's going on, what's happening. Do you reckon it's been so successful because of how diverse you are? We've taken some risks. Yeah. Because <laughs> nothing's for nothing. Yeah. Uh, and we don't get a full nut in every shell, that's a guaranteed thing. Uh, no, we have taken some risks. Without a shadow of a doubt, <clears throat> you know, they've got to help each other. But we've all got the same goal. Mm -hmm. And we all enjoy doing what we're doing. Everyone just compliments each other too. Yeah, it does, it does. That way, because... Yeah. They all fit in with each other. You know, if it was something completely uh, out of zinc with that, I don't think, one, we wouldn't understand it, and two, if you're not careful, you can invest too much time in that, and it may be a very... Uh, no, we, we just try and do what we're doing and try and do it better. How many cows would you like to grow to? Well, I started with 75, and I thought if I get to 150, I'll be dangerous. <laughs> so I got to that, and we, never, we weren't dangerous. And we're not driven by numbers. We are not driven by numbers. We have got, when we went from 450 to 600 cows, that was probably the worst time, the worst thing we ever did, because we completely went out of the sweet spot. And that was probably the best learning curve we've ever had. We might milk another 50 year, we might milk 100 more, but... We're not driven by numbers, provided yeah. we can keep the cabin index, we can keep everything, uh, the efficiencies as we are, Honored. numbers don't matter, no, yeah. Yeah. no. Uh, we can have, you can have one met too many and that's when we will, I uh, will know, we won't go, we won't do that pain again. Yeah. Because we were, you needed a, a half a staff member more mm -hmm. and you needed, uh, then the buildings weren't quite right so you're overstocked and we have learned, we'll probably have to learn again but the, at the moment, no. Uh, we do actually realise that there is a sweet spot. So, mm -hmm. we're, uh, no, we're not driven by numbers. So you've learned a lot over your years. Yeah, we have. <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot of mistakes. Yeah, a lot. Uh, if you don't have a go, you're not going to win in everything. If you go back, would you do it all again? Yeah, it's quite... Uh, I enjoy it. And, yeah, I'm getting to an age of... You know, and a lot of um, people are on final salary and uh, index links, uh, pensions and things like that. And um, I wouldn't swap. And change it for the world? No. 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 But some fun times and some okay. good times and some times you think it, oof, I think I've gone a bit too far this time, but no, it works and it, it does work and, it, and it's quite nice to see the next generation coming through. If they weren't interested, they weren't, we'd be in a different place. Mm -hmm. To be fair, I might have some money, but. But. Um, What's your favourite job of all the whole business? <coughs> if you'd really go out tomorrow? I change. I do. I might get fed up with that one and think. Um, I, I was never. My father was a really keen milkman and a really keen chap on the, on the breeding, the Holsteins, and one thing or another. And he sort of followed it through, but nowhere near the interest that James has had. Um, milking. I haven't milked now for some time, uh, maybe 12 years. I, I don't know. I wouldn't like to put a time on it, but it is a long time. Mm -hmm. Unless I've taken a cup of tea down there and something's gone wrong, or you might put a few units, but it's rare. But I did quite a bit of it. Mm -hmm. um, Done your time. Yeah, mm -hmm. really, to be fair. Mm -hmm. And not as much as a lot of people uh, yeah. you know, have done in the past. You know, the generation my father before, you know, what did he milk? 27 years, never had a day off. Do you know what I mean? And, but that, that generation and, and the next generation moves again. But uh, I quite enjoy the building. The office work, I don't like. I don't like that. Pricing, I don't, I will do that. And, and yes, yeah, so the building, I suppose, but uh, the tractors, I don't understand them because there's that much technology on them. I mean, it's just like phones, really. So, a very rare, yes, I'll lug it in, mm -hmm. but it is rare. Very rare. It's really rare. Yeah, they don't trust me on it unless it's like a uh, 290 that's just got a hydraulic lever, a bit of power steering, and levers in the middle. That'll, that's about it. I fully don't understand them. No. But yeah, you know, when, when the contracting grew, we started, obviously, like I said, and we had one forager, Rico. Then we were running four, and yeah, it was uh, milking here, then going to chop in the day, then get someone in the afternoon or when I had to come back and milk. And yeah, I did it then, but they, you know, that was quite, to what it is now, simplistic. Yeah. These lads, you, to be fair to them, you need a degree in it. Mm -hmm. You know, with GPS and setting it all, 
I'm out of touch with that. And it isn't that I'm being ignorant to it. Or, and I'm quite content that I don't know, really. So, but I'm quite lucky there's not one job. I'm going to go on concrete every day. I'm going to go milk. I'm going to probably be doing as many, if not more hours, but you actually have a choice what you do. Do you know how many staff you have gone at the minute? Uh, through all the business, I think there was 54 with the subcontractors, about 83, is it? With the girls at the holiday lets and things mm -hmm. like that included. Yeah, somewhere around that. Uh, you know, and there'd be other days that you could have, oh, I, would, I dread to think, but that's on a, on a, mm -hmm. a regular. And we keep them through the winter, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, we do keep them through the winter. I There's, suppose we're having the building and all, like even... Uh, they can move from one to the other, yeah. which happened a lot in the past, but I don't know, it, it, it's very rare that the contracting has got anyone spare to... Do anything. We did nick him this afternoon to move some heifers, but yeah. that was because it's rained. And, but that, that's a rare, that was a rare opportunity. Usually, it's in house. And there wasn't much contracting on. You could have offered them a job in the building back. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, and, and to be fair, they do. Oh, yeah. they go on. You know, we do quite a bit of groundwork. So they, you know, I suppose they complement each other. That you know, do quite a lot of dump trailer work and that type of thing. And if you were to give some advice to the younger generation, what advice would you give them? To be perfectly honest, um, a lot of the young ones will say there's more opportunities in our time than there was in their time now, which I completely disagree because when we first started, interest rates admittedly have gone up now, but anyone at 35 or less does not know what interest rates ever have been. So you'll, you know they've never had that. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, we had a lot of restrictions and milk quarters. You know, you were selling your milk for 22 to 24p and there's 14p to 18p you were leasing quarter for. Or if you didn't want to lease, you were buying it up to, I don't know, I did go dizzy heights of 80p to a pound, but it was near, the norm was 35 to 45, 50p. But that still took some financing and, and mm -hmm. I think there's more technology around now. There's more steering groups, there's more uh, advice well, even through social media, even through Google, you don't even have to have a consultant. You can actually do a lot of it through uh, that sort of thing. So I wouldn't say there's any, they're restricted more now. I think it was hard enough then, but it was still, uh, you've got to take a risk, but you have got to be committed. And you're not going to get it right all the time, and that is a guarantee. But you, you, have, got to, you have got to commit yourself for that. And a lot of, the, a lot of families don't want that. They'd rather have a bit more quality time. A lot of, you know, there's, there's a lot of sacrifices made. A lot of sacrifices, a lot of risk, a lot of sacrifices, but you've got a fighting chance if you believe in yourself. The wheel can still come off, don't get me wrong, but at least you have a fighting chance. But you've got to try and believe in yourself as well. But you won't always get it right. And, and there's many a time you think, ooh, that was a bridge too far. <laughs> but it's equal as, as good as opportunity now as has ever been. If you've got two out of the three sons working in the business now, how would you like to see the business in the future? Well, uh, you know, James, is, uh, he's got two uh, young lads. Um, Josh has, I've got a little girl. Build a future for the next generation, really, as long as they want to be involved and want to be part of it or they want to. It's about the next generation, isn't it? Just, you know, and that's what you, yeah. you do do it for. And it, if they're interested, it's fine. You know, it's like, well, the youngest one, he's gone a uh, professional footballer now, living the dream. Yeah. Good luck to him. Do what they want to do, to be fair. As long as they're happy. Are you living your dream? Yeah. yeah. I, am. I like what I'm doing. I enjoy it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So that makes a difference. So